We ask the question. What is music in the world? Something big is about to happen in Afghanistan. He's leaving, Hamid Karzai. Next year is the end of his presidency. Who'll be the new leader in charge? Well, maybe this man, the Foreign Minister Zalmay Rasul. Some in Afghanistan want him, are urging him to run. It's widely claimed he may be Karzai's preferred candidate. Why, what's the appeal, and will he run? The clock is ticking. Candidates must announce their intentions just next week. Today on Talk to Al Jazeera, a man some believe the people of Afghanistan may end up calling Mr. President. Dr. Zameh Rasul, Foreign Minister of Afghanistan, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. And I ca can I start by asking you about the next year, 2014? How important is this year going to be for Afghanistan? The next year will be very important for the future of Afghanistan for several reasons. First, as you know, by the end of 2014, the international forces will leave Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, already the national security force, Afghan national security forces, are already in charge of the security of Afghanistan, over 90% of our population. Secondly, we know what happened to the peace process, which has been started but stalled after the Doha issues how we are going to manage to see if there is going to be any progress in the peace process. And thirdly, and most importantly, we have a very important presidential election. It is the first time in our history that an elected president will replace another elected president in Afghanistan. So the outcome of the election, the way the election will go, will make the future of Afghanistan. Very important events, creating a fair bit of uncertainty. Is it rather unfortunate they're all coinciding at the same time? Yeah, that's the, that's the reason to make this year very important year, because uh, the transition is going to be finished. Uh, I'm very optimistic about the tra security transition. Uh, we, need, we are working also, as you know, uh, with the United States to finalize the bilateral security agreement, uh, the peace process, uh, which are committed to that, we see how it will go, our relation with the new government in Pakistan, and finally the election are the, the issues in the agenda for months to come. So a testing time, do you think Afghanistan will be able to pass this test or are you worried about the security situation as Afghans face a really uncertain future? Afghanistan should pass this test. We do, there is no other option. Uh, I think we are, in this, as I mentioned to you, in the security transition, things are going positively. All the area, the Afghan National Security Force is now in charge. The security did not deteriorate it. In some area, it improved. Uh, we need a better equipment for our forces to cope better with these challenges. Uh, on the peace process, I mentioned to you, uh, we had a very good meeting, uh, President Karzai, with uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. We are hopeful that uh, we can build on that a new momentum in Afghanistan-Pakistan relation, which directly will help the peace uh, process. Uh, as we are working on the finalizing the security bilateral security agreement with the United States, and finally we are working to organize the election, an election which will be clear, which will be acceptable. The result will be acceptable to the majority of the Afghan people. Of course, there are challenges, but I'm optimistic that we will go through. Unlike the last presidential election, where there was so much dispute, it created lots of problems last time. The last time dispute was because there were a lot of interferences uh, in that election, and I think everybody, Afghans and our friends, uh, learned the lesson of that, and we have made more experience. Uh, so I'm, I'm quite confident that this time the election will give a good result for the future of Afghanistan. Of course, Afghans have only known one leader for the last 12 years, and you've got a very young population. There'll be many people who don't know Afghanistan without Hamid Karzai. I think that's, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, something new in the uh, political scene of Afghanistan. Uh, the boys or the girls, which uh, when we came to Afghanistan at the end of 2001, were six or eight or nine years old, or all 20 is 18 years old. They have had access to internet, to the free media, to television. Uh, and they are the majority, you know, over 65% of Afghanistan population today is less than 25 years old. 
So it is a very important political force for the future of Afghanistan. We don't know who the next leader will be. Afghans will decide. We don't even know who the candidates are going to be because candidates have until October the 6th to register their interests. I have to say, all the people I've been speaking to in Kabul say right now, you are the favorite. You know, there are a lot of rumors at the moment about the, but the, and on the 7th of October in the morning, everybody know, will know who is the candidate for the presidential election. Are you considering running? I can just tell you that the 7th of October, everybody will know about it. But as, as you think about the idea of running, you must have thought about it because people have been urging you to run. There must be going through your mind downsides to running for that job because you've worked along Hamid, uh, alongside Hamid Karzai for so long. You know how lonely it can be in that security bubble inside the presidential palace. Yes, everybody has thought about it, I'm sure. Uh, but again, uh, the, the, today I'm talking to you as a foreign minister of Afghanistan, and on the 7th of October, everybody will know. But speaking to you as a prominent statesman from Afghanistan, what do you think are the qualities that the new president will need? I think the best quality, the most important quality that the next president should have is to unify the Afghan people. He should become a symbol of unity of the Afghan people. That's the only way that the result of the election will be acceptable, but also to keep Afghanistan, because Winning an election is something, but running a country is something more difficult uh, to, in order to keep the Afghan people united. So we'll go, Afghanistan will go through a path of democratic four years to come. How important do you think for any candidate will be to have the blessing of Hamid Karzai? As you know, President Karzai said that he has no going to, to no good, is not going to favor anybody. He is the president of Afghanistan and his duty to prepare an election, a credible election for the future of Afghanistan. All sorts of names, as I say, right now, speaking to lots of people I've been speaking to in Afghanistan, they put you at the top of the list, but lots of other names on the list, including, and I'm going to be polite, names, I'm not going to use the word warlord, but people's, people who were involved in fighting in the past. Uh, for example, Abdul Rasul uh, Sayaf, Atta Muhammad Noor, uh, the governor of Balkh province. Do you think that it would be right now, in this stage of Afghanistan's history, as Afghanistan moves to a new future, to have someone who is involved leading the fight in the past? Afghanistan went through a difficult time in the past history, as you know. I think any Afghan today has the right to become candidate. And only the Afghan people has the right to decide who is the right man to run the Afghanistan for the future. And you are confident now in the arrangements that have been made for this election, because there was a lot of dispute last time, a lot of wrangling. You say part of it was because of foreign interference. But are you confident this time Afghanistan has got the system right and it's going to work this time? It's going to work much better this time. Uh, we have learned our lesson of the two elections. Uh, we are better prepared. Uh, the psyche of the Afghan people is going through the election. As you mentioned, if you go today to Kabul or other big city of Afghanistan, Everybody is talking about election. And that's a very good news. That means that the democratic process for a transition of power is taking roots in the, in the Afghan society. Every Afghan talks about this. You're right. Can I tell you one of the other theories that's floating around? Maybe you can tell us whether this makes any sense at all. The suggestion that if you decide to run, it could be some sort of Russian deal where you'll take on the presidency for four years and then uh, President Karzai will t play the sort of Putin role and come back in 2018. Do you think he wants to return to power in the future? First of all, it's pure speculation. You know, you can speculate at any time that you want. But, uh, but I'm asking you about, you know President Karzai very well. Do you think he wants to step out away from the limelight or does he feel he has a role to play for his country he in has, the future? He has definitely a role to play in the country. You know, he has been the president of Afghanistan for 12 years and Afghanistan need uh, figures which can work and unify the country. Now, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, rumors uh, months ago that uh, President Karzai will not leave the power, that he will delay the election that he will change the constitution. Not of them has happened, you know. And, and he, he always said that they will not stay one day more of what the constitution of Afghanistan allow me to stay. And, and for the moment, all the focus of the election and the president is fully committed to organize a credible election. As if conducting a presidential election in Afghanistan isn't a difficult challenge in itself, add this. 
Next year, American forces will also leave the country. Leaders in Afghanistan and the Western-led coalition are making reassuring statements, but under the surface, there's widespread concern about what's to come. The enemies of Afghanistan may change their tactics, but they will not succeed. They will not undermine the trust we have built over the years and across this country. They will not divide us from our Afghan partners and friends. And they will not divert us from our mission, our strategy and our timeline. Afghans are ready to expedite the process of transition if necessary and willing as well. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, in all aspects, uh, good news for us and good news for NATO. Our mission will change from combat to support. By 2014, this process of transition will be complete, and the Afghan people will be responsible for their own security. Let me ask you about the negotiations you've been having for a very, very long time with the Americans, about the American presence in Afghanistan after next year. At one stage, there were NATO troops, I think 140,000 at the height. How many foreign troops will be in your country after 2014? I'm not going to comment the number because it's something that should be arranged between the Afghanistan and the United States and Afghanistan and NATO. Uh, but you know, we have already signed strategic partnership with the United States, which gave the framework of the bilateral security agreement. One thing I can tell you that this bilateral security agreement should guarantee the, the benefit of Afghanistan and the Afghan people. And uh, in the context of uh, sovereignty of Afghanistan. So it is a discussion that's advancing. We have a lot of discussion. A lot of technical issues has been sorted out. It's a matter of time to see how we can uh, have more clarification and some other issues that are more political. I know you want, don't want to reveal what you actually want out of it in the end. You're still in negotiation, but people are talking about perhaps something between 13,000 and 20,000 uh, troops in Afghanistan, U.S. troops and about seven U.S. bases. Is that the sort of thing we're talking about or are we talking about a much bigger footprint or a much smaller one? Frankly, I cannot comment on the number because we have not reached a part of the number. Of course, uh, United States will decide about the number and Afghanistan will agree to discuss these issues. But definitely what I can say is not going to be a large number. That's all I can, I can tell. But the, the exact number, I cannot comment on that. Can you tell us about the various sticking points, or at least what Afghanistan says are lines that can't be crossed? For example, the Americans want, I think, immunity from prosecution for their troops. They have it at the moment. Is that something you'll accept? We are under discussion on that, in which framework that could be acceptable. Uh, but mainly we are discussing about the larger uh, political clarification about the mission of the future forces will stay in Afghanistan in the context of the Afghanistan sovereignty. Militaries need a long time to plan, both NATO and the US. They've got to work out how many troops to withdraw. Their clock, clock is ticking very fast now. I'm told the US want you to sort this out by October. They've given you a deadline of October. Are you in any hurry to sort this out? You know, I repeat what I said. A security agreement, bilateral security agreement should sign which will guarantee the, 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 the benefit of the Afghan people will take from it in the context of Afghan sovereignty, you know. Uh, and, and, and we are advance, advancing uh, on that issues. Uh, I cannot comment if it's going to be ready by the end of October or not, but uh, we are in, the, in the, that path. Is it possible this could be left by President Karzai to be decided by the new president? Well, it will depend, you know. I hope that you'll finalize it before the President Karzai should, uh, should sign it. But again, uh, it is a matter of uh, a more clarification on certain issues that you are discussing with our American friends. Talking about clarification on certain issues, maybe you can clarify one issue for me, a deal I thought had already been done, and that is that detention center at Bagram. Are the U.S. still holding detainees? And I'm particularly talking about non-Afghans, because some are saying that is an Afghan Guantanamo Bay there on your soil. 
No, the majority, the total, uh, all Afghan prisoners are in charge of Afghanistan. I'm not uh, asking about the Afghan prisoners, Foreign Minister. I'm asking about the foreigners. The foreigners, we are in discussion about this issue. So they are still being held by Americans on Afghan soil right now? We are in discussion about this matter. Well, who is holding them right now? Whose custody are they in, are they in right now? They are in background, but we are discussing to, to sort it out their future. Can I ask you also about the forces that remain and whether they would be allowed to be used against any of your neighbors. I think President Karzai has spoken at that, about no. that before. That's something that even uh, that I've discussed with them, our American friends. Uh, we are in full agreement. The presence of future posts, U.S. force and NATO force will be for training, equipping and advising the Afghan national security forces. Uh, in the, no way, in the full agreement on that, that this force cannot be used or cannot be threat to the neighbors or the region including Iran, because it's likely there'll be a base maybe in Shindan near Herat. Including Iran. Okay. Let's move on to the Taliban and talking to the Taliban. There was a Taliban office set up in Doha in the summer. The Americans were very heavily supporting that office. They were briefing us. I remember I was at the G8 summit in Northern Ireland at the time and they were briefing us. There's going to be a big announcement. Tell us your reaction when you saw that big announcement. You know, uh, we, were, we were also supportive of a Doha office. Uh, and we agreed that Doha office is going to be a place in which we can start to talk with the Taliban. We agreed also that the peace talk should go between Afghanistan, Afghans and Taliban, of course. And the High Peace Council should represent the Afghanistan to this talk. That was the aim of opening the office in Doha. What happened was contrary to what I've decided before. That means the office started a sort of re political representation. There was a Taliban flag, etc. I said we protested. So it became a Taliban en embassy rather than sort a of starting to become some sort, and we reacted very strongly. And within 48 hours, uh, the, the flag was down, and uh, uh, and so forth. Since then, the, the, that the activity has been stalled in the peace process. So. Now, but the, the issue is that Afghanistan will continue uh, to cut off the peace process as a very important element of the future for security and stability. Now, uh, we are uh, always uh, open to that. Uh, and as I mentioned to you, uh, the, the, the discussion that we have had, that President Karzai had with uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, uh, was a good discussion. And that let us hope that we will make maybe soon uh, more progress in that. I'd like to ask you about that in just a moment, but just on the Doha office, is the Doha track uh, to some sort of uh, resolution, is that now closed? Not totally closed. Uh, we, can, we can use Doha, but in the condition that we have agreed in before. Okay, well moving on to Pakistan and the release of Mullah Brada recently. How important is that? I think it is important in the sense that uh, the release of Mullah Brother was promised several times, it didn't happen. So the fact that the release of Mullah Brother happened shows some signal, positive signal from the willingness of the new government in Pakistan to work with Afghanistan. Uh, so it has, what will, what will, what will happen with Mullah Brother in peace process and other issues. But the fact that he has been released is a very positive signal from Pakistan showing that there's a readiness in the new government of Pakistan to work with Afghanistan, not only in peace process, but in f common fight against terrorism and extremism, which threat both countries. He's been released. Where is he now, and is he returning to Afghanistan? That's under discussion. Would you like him to return to Afghanistan? Do you think he could play an active role? Do you think he's a moderate member of the Taliban? He can play. push things forward? He can play an important role. If he's come, if he come to Afghanistan, he's most welcome to this country. But if he wants to move somewhere else in the first step, we have no problem with that too. And what about Hizb Islami, the other group as well as the Taliban? Is there any progress there? Uh, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, any progress there on talking to him? Because I know that party is split and parts of it are involved with the government. There are contacts. There are contacts. We are hoping to, to increase this contact and come up with some uh, good solution. What about the domestic situation in Afghanistan regarding the economy? How worried are you? 2014, when the foreign troops pull out, 
that so much investment will pull out, so much of the money will pull out, so many Afghans will lose the wages they used to get from the foreigners. Is that going to be a big problem? There's going to be a problem. Actually, we are facing three transitions. The security transition that is happening, the political transition, which is going to be the election, and economic transition. There is no doubt that when the thousands of foreign forces leave Afghanistan, that will create a sort of financial vacuum. Now, what we are going to do first, we have this uh, result of the Tokyo conference, which uh, over 16 to 18 billion dollars has been committed to fill the gap uh, after the withdrawal, at least for three, four years after 2014. Secondly, we are working uh, very hard to uh, start investment, foreign investment in Afghanistan. As you know, uh, after the signing of the copper mine with China, uh, we are in very close uh, reaching a, a, a agreement with India for a major uh, investment in iron ore mining in Afghanistan. Uh, there are two, three companies that are uh, starting to uh, extraction of oil and gas in northern Afghanistan. So we are working to enough. So we have plan on the revival and expanding the agriculture sector. So we are have a emergency plan uh, for immediate and longer plan. So if anything happened uh, to the, f the, the, the plan, uh, by the uh, end of next decade, not only Afghanistan will not have financial gap, but we'll be on our own foot, foot and it will not need any foreign aid. You mentioned the Tokyo conference. This was donors, countries of the world, giving money for Afghanistan. Again, concerns were raised about corruption. A recent UN report said half of Afghanistan's population paid a bribe for basic services in the last year, and those bribes totaled $3.9 billion. You're not getting at that problem, are you? It's, it's persistent. Yeah, but there's one report that there is other report. There's no doubt that there is corruption. And, and high-level corruption. There is corruption, you know. And uh, we need to sort it out. We need to tackle that. There is no doubt about it. Not because to make our international friends happy, but it's the need of the Afghan people because they suffer most on the corruption issues. So that is something that needs to be tackled. Uh, we had a series of meetings with our international friends, donor of Tokyo, because there was a commitment from both sides. Uh, this uh, first meeting went properly better. Uh, there is agreement that a lot of things that we have promised is done so far, and a lot of things that they have done is going to be done. But we are fully committed to implement the Tokyo Conference uh, result and commitments. Without that, Afghanistan would be in trouble. The other financial problem you face is financing your huge security forces you have. By the end of the year, it's supposed to be, I think, 352,000 people in the Afghan police and army. That is, you know, the, the, we, we decided that after the conference summit of Chicago, which uh, the NATO countries uh, has committed a financial support to sustaining Afghan national security forces for 10 years to come. But they want you to cut the numbers. We will cut the number gradually when the stability and uh, uh, out of force and uh, will, will, will progress. Isn't there a danger there? you'll have people who are trained with weapons being put out of work. We need to find them our jobs, and that's depend of all the projects that I mentioned to you. Are you concerned about rising levels of unemployment next year as 2014 passes? I'm concerned about that. You are concerned and working to, to, to work hard to make sure what we can do for them. What can you do about that? I think what we can do is to accelerate small business, small investment, and, and some major projects so they can, they, can, they can go and find work. Dr. Rasul, I know you won't tell us whether you're going to run or not, but I would ask you this as an Afghan. What is your vision for your country in four years' time, at the end of the next president's term, whoever that man may be? Uh, my vision and my wish is to be a peaceful, uh, prosperous, and especially democratic Afghanistan. All the achievement that we have made with the support and help of our international friends on democratic process, on freedom of media, on uh, uh, girls and boys going to school, ex freedom of expression, which are not perfect, should be kept and strengthened in the coming years. Plus, all the reform that Afghanistan need to correct those things that we cannot have done it in the last 10 years. Dr. Zameh Rasul, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you very much.